environment that facilitates that growth to reach those objectives, that we can be an effectual church, not a traditional church, but an effective church in these last days. And so we just thank you, Lord, for giving us vision, direction, and just showing us who we are, which is very, very frightful for the devil, that we learn who we are in you, in the name of Jesus. So we receive what you have today, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, one of the things I wanted to cover today is, good morning, uh, just, just so you guys be on point, because the, the stage is being set uh, on earth right now. The stage is being set, and, and it's being set for what God is putting in you. That's why all these years that you and I make the sacrifice to learn the words of life, to dedicate ourselves to learning who God is, growing in grace and truth, because it has multiple layers to it. One is to be conformed to his image. That's what God wants. Secondly, is that you have enough God and his substance in you that he can trust you and use you to represent him in these last days. So that there's going to be a ministry demand on you. I want to try to hit it because it's coming. And it's going to be a demand on you. You think you just see a learning or whatever and, you know, but there's going to be a demand on what God puts in you like you have never, ever imagined. And uh, you're going to be one of be wanting to go, what do I do? <laughs> this is a lot, I didn't expect this, but it's coming. It's coming. So you, you need to be aware of this. And I'm going to read some scripture here. Because God, uh, he, he says this in his word, and I don't think people really know the extent of what this means. So I'm starting Isaiah, and we've covered, these are many scriptures we've covered uh, before. All right. Two. Uh, and it shall come to pass in the last days. I mean, no, we're in the last days. No, okay. You're in the last days. Yeah, I know. <laughs> in the last days. So it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow into it. Okay? All nations shall what? Flow into it. Flow into it. All right. It shall flow into it. But, you know, if, if the nations and the multitudes on this earth are going to start flowing into the mountain of the Lord's house, then the people who have been already in the house need to be equipped, discipled, uh, full of God's truth to be able to disciple them and give them what they're looking for. Because I'm telling you, they're going to be knocking on your door, tapping me on your shoulder. Please tell me about Jesus. I want to know. All right. Because you've got a lot of people confused, hurt, distressed in the world. And as the conditions continue to darken, uh, you're going to have a lot of people that sense the Spirit of God. you pour out His Spirit. And their hearts are going to be convinced, I got to get to God. And when they see you, the Christian, the believer, is going to be one of the most people in demand. Your life, what you know, is going to be in the highest demand. People are going to want to know. <laughs> Tell me this Jesus that y'all been sitting up and learning. And you need to be able to have words in you that are words of life. Words that give hope. Words that shine light. Words that lift people out of their despair. They should be able to walk away from you feeling like, oh, thank you. I, I, I see it now. I feel hope now. Now I feel better. I, I have hope now. I didn't have hope before. Some people are going to come to you that su suicidal. But if you let them know how God sees them and what his plan is, then they'll walk away and say, I didn't know he saw me that way. I didn't know he wants me to be close to him. I, I didn't know he did these things for me. So you have to have that rooted in you. So that's what comes out of your spirit, out of your soul, out of your mouth, 
to be able to minister to people. You're not just here going to church. You're here to be developed and discipled into ministry because Jesus Christ is ministry. He is ministry. Okay, so he says uh, that in verse 3, the people shall go and say, come. You know, they're going to start inviting others. <laughs> come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of God, uh, of Jacob, and he will teach us See, they're coming to learn. They want to know. He will teach us of his ways. And we will walk in his paths. Okay? So, things are going to change. Things are changing. God is changing things and setting things up for you. We don't know what's going on in the world and all the things that people are going through. It's all being set up for the church. Things, God's going to clear the land, so to speak. He's going to move things that are hindering. He's going to create a platform. He has created a platform for the church to step up and set a stage. It's, it's happening. It's starting. It is happening. He's been working on this. So I, I don't want you all to be taken by surprise. <laughs> so when 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 uh, you get almost uh, a mob <laughs> by people running you down, wanting wanting to know. Uh, of course, to be equipped means you have what you need. If you, well, let me put it this way. God can only use what's in you. Right? So if you got a little in you, that's, that's really all you can use. If you got a lot in you, uh, to whom much is given, much is required. Right? So uh, he can only use what's in you. So it's just really up to you how much you, you know, allow the spirit to sow. His kingdom, his truth in you. That's 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 the that's what's gonna happen. That's what has to happen. So uh, we're gonna add also Joel 21. Right? Somebody read that. Fear not, Malan, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. All right, fear not, O land. You see, a lot of things if if you're looking at life and walking on this earth, there's going to be a lot of things you're going to see. And people are driven by fear. People are so consumed with fear on this earth. And there's so much frequency, what I call the frequency of fear, is coming from hell, really. The frequency of fear is coming from hell. So hell will influence uh, Evil reports, negative messages, and people who have influence will be on that frequency, and they'll have influence over people. And so there's a lot of fear that's being generated in the land. But here, when you come and you're walking with God, you, the, the one being groomed, you should have enough word and truth in you that the light should be so strong in you that you can have the opposite. You can, you can first of all, you know to detach and block out that frequency. And you can recognize it because the truth calibrates your heart to what is what God is doing. And so you know to say, well, this, this message. This thing that people are hearing, this people that people are buying into, they're used to listening to, you don't give your ear to that, your heart, your soul to that. You don't want that register on your soul because it will generate, and it will change your body. It will change your psychology. It will change your physiology. When you, if you keep listening to the wrong stuff, negative stuff, uh, fear-mongering stuff, it will change you. It will change your physical body, it will change your soul, it will change how you think, and you, you'll have dreams accordingly that, you know, you'll, you'll have, you, the devil will use all of that to rearrange your soul and keep your soul uh, wrapped up and bound in fear. What you need is the truth. The truth gives you the outlook that God has. Once you have the outlook, you see a bright, glorious future. God is going to do great things, and that's what the word says right here. 
the, for the Lord will do great things in these last days. He's going to do great things. So I don't care how dark it gets in the world. The Lord is going to do great things. Hallelujah. Yeah. So he says, be not afraid. Who was reading? Keep reading. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree bears her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. That's the life of God. That's the divine life of God. You cannot stop the divine life of God from producing fruit. I don't care how dark it is. This is God's, this is God's rodeo. Right? This is God's show. And nothing's going to stop it. So yes, the wilderness will spring. The tree will bear the fruit because Jesus is the tree of life. Fig tree and the vine. Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. The vine will yield its strength. You can't stop that. Those who are connected to Christ, they're going to become stronger and stronger and more fruitful. All right? Keep reading. What, two more verses. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath, hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down to you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> the former rain was when all that good news came and Jesus first came on the scene on the earth and established his church in the day of Pentecost. That's the former rain. We've been in the former rain for the last 2,000 years. But now, what's coming is a latter rain. The latter rain and the former rain combined together. That's going to be a miracle. Both rains, because that's going to create the most productivity. That's a supernatural produce. That's supernatural. That's like, that's like, that's better than compound interest if you ever read investments and, you know, money increases in compound. This is better than compound interest. It's, it's the compounding of, of God reproducing supernaturally uh, the spiritual things, the plan of God, the thing that's in you. You think you got a little, a little anointing now. Wait till God compounds it. Wait till you get the rain and former rain and latter rain. All right. Wait, wait, understand again, former rain has to do with the part realm. The latter rain has to do with the perfect realm. And you combine them both, really, and you get a full deluge <laughs> from, from, from God the Father in the earth through these through these sons and daughters of God. That's what's going to happen. And just in the atmosphere itself on the earth is going to change drastically, right? So we need to be in expectation. When I read this, it tells me you're going to be brought into a whirlwind of ministry, right? All of you. And it doesn't have to be pulpit ministry. I'm not talking about that necessarily. Ministry happens wherever you are. You are a walking, talking altar. <laughs> you know, you are the altar. Wherever you are, you are the, the messenger. You are the communicator. Wherever you are, grocery store, at work, you know, uh, you are the one communicating. You're the one carrying the light wherever you are. All right? And you'll be surprised how much people will see what's on you and ask you, are you a believer in Christ? It's going to be really reverse evangelism. Uh, where we're at now, we got to go to people, knock on the door, go to people, hey, have you accepted Jesus? Well, imagine the people coming to you, running after you, tapping you on the shoulder, saying, can you tell me about Jesus? All right? Over and over again. Go to Walmart and then come out having told 10 people that came and pulled you by the sleeve and said, hey, tell me about Jesus. Can y'all imagine that? This is, that's not, see, that doesn't even fit the, the, the concept of where we live today and how things are. First of all, we don't really go and tell people every day. So, so to imagine people coming to us and saying, hey, I need to know Jesus. Do you know him? And if you do, please tell me. You know. <laughs> so this is, this is what it's going to get like. Okay, so and he says in the last verse, and the floor shall be full of wheat. See, and the floors shall be full of wheat. Wheat is the productivity of souls. Now, that's, that's, that's people growing out of the gospel. The floor shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. All right? 
there's going to be an increase. Remember the, the foolish virgins and the, didn't have enough oil in their land. Uh, they didn't take enough oil. They didn't attend to their oil, the spiritual uh, content uh, from the word. They didn't, they didn't attend to the oil to take extra oil with them. But for those who have the wisdom to keep feeding on the truth, he says, you are being set up to not only have extra oil, but then there's going to be an overflow of oil coming to you. Because as Job says, I, I, I counsel in the rock. And I, my, I walked, my steps were in butter. And the rock poured me out oil, overflowing oil. He's talking about Jesus as the rock. He says, the, first of all, let me just deal with that right now. He says, uh, my steps were in butter. Butter is the strong meat of, the, of milk. All right. Butter is strong meat of milk. He says, my steps were in butter, strong meat. And then he said, the rock poured me out oil. Right? It, poured, it constantly poured me out oil. So if you want to keep oil in your lamp, <laughs> keep it burning, don't be like the, the, the sleepy virgins, the foolish virgins. Tend to the strong meat. Feed on the strong meat. You'll have a lot of oil in your lamp. And then here it says, your vat shall overflow with wine. And with oh, that's a glorious state to be in. Okay, uh, let's add another one. I just want to get to, these are all pointing to what to expect in the last days. Isaiah 60, verse 1 through 5. Sorry, you start reading that. So as the darkness increases on the earth and the people, those who are the branches that are connected to the vine, Jesus Christ, they are abiding in him, their words are abiding in them. He says, this is the light coming, the, the light and the glory is going to be seen upon you. So as it gets darker, the glory is going to be seen on you. Okay. Keep reading though. It, 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 that's, just, that's just setting the stage. Keep reading. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light. They shall come to thy light. See, you're going to be in demand. What's on you and in you, the glory, the truth, the kingdom, the power is going to be in demand. They will come to thy light. Keep going. And kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Look, he's saying, look, <laughs> lift up your eyes, look around, look at all these people coming, look at them gathering, look at them asking questions about God and about Christ. Look, they are coming to thee, they come to thee, they are coming to thee. Get ready, y'all. You need to get as full as you can on this earth while you're breathing and living. If God gives us grace to stay here, get full as you can because your light will be turned upright, and people all around will begin to gather and come unto thee. All right, keep reading. Thy son shall come from far, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt speak and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. So the, the abundance of the seed, the seed represents people, multitudes and multitudes of people. The abundance of the seed shall be converted unto thee. And the forces, in other words, the resources, the wealth of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. So it's coming with so many things that God is going to provide the believer who's been feeding and preparing to, to become sons of God comes with a lot. To become sons and daughters of God comes with a lot. So, you know, he, 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 all of this stuff is being set up to come. Again, his, his glory, his fire, uh, his power, his kingdom being full inside of you. 
comes with so many benefits. It comes with so many uh, uh, demands as well, responsibility. Because people, many people, are going to be ministered to through you being sons and daughters of God, through you being full of God, you who sought the kingdom first and his righteousness. That pays off, all right? That pays off. Because all the other people are trying to find answers in houses, land, money, jobs, all that stuff, and they had not sought God first. But now, with the Spirit being poured out upon all flesh, and people waking up and experiencing the pull of the Spirit, but they don't know anything about Him, they don't know anything about Jesus, they don't know anything about the kingdom, they don't know. All they know is the Spirit is pulling on me so strong. Where do I go? Who do I talk to? Who can give me answers? All right. It's going to get so demanding. The ministry that's in you, whatever ministry that God has called you, you don't have to create things. You don't have to, you know, wait for a, a ministry. It's going to demand, it's going to put a demand on you so much. You'll be like, man, when, Lord, when do I get some sleep? <laughs> you know, uh, you're going to have to have your little barricade, a private spot. Put on in the sky so they won't recognize you. I'm going to my secret place so I can get some rest, right? Because other than that, if they find out where you live, oh yeah, you'll find, wake up every morning, find people lined up at your door, knocking at your door. I need prayer. I need this. I need that. They'll find you. It's like, look at what happened to Jesus, the Son of God. Multitudes follow him. They follow him sometimes for the wrong reason. You know, they got fed, you know, meat and fish. And they start hunting him down, you know, and he was like, you, you need more than somebody to give you meat. You need the truth, you know, so you'll have to, you'll have to correct people for following you for the wrong reason. Right? Amen? But it's going to come. The, the, the flow is going to come. It is going to happen in these last days. And we don't need to be sitting around acting like things the way things are now. Then it will remain that way until... Jesus coming in. No. <laughs> no, it's not going to remain. It's not going to remain. Uh, so much is going to happen. So, uh, <clears throat> and there's other scriptures uh, that I can uh, refer to here. Uh, so, but one of the things that, yes. Did you point this out? Because when I looked at it, I looked at the word fear, but it's explaining that it's actually joy. Uh, what year? Five, verse five. And I shall see flow together, thine heart shall fear. Well, that, that, yeah, that's not the fear of, you know, the evil fear. It's, it's, and because he, because he says, your heart shall be enlarged, right? So, uh, that, that, that fear is, is, uh, it, the fear of the Lord, which is not, I'm afraid, he going to, knock me down. <laughs> you know, it's an awe of the Lord. It's, it's the result of being full of the Lord that you recognize, you acknowledge this is absolutely amazing. I didn't know uh, you could do this uh, on this scale with us, you know, so it's it's really an awe of, the, the, you know, that fills the heart and it enlarges the heart. The heart becomes so enlarged because now you're seeing a side of God that you didn't see before that just takes all restraints and limits off uh, of your mind, you know, pretty much. You, you might have had a limited view about things, but when you see God move in this dimension, you really, uh, you really start to see another, another uh, inside that just takes all the limits off. It's just like uh, I, I said here recently that uh, you, you, you have a measure of the spirit. That's what we're accustomed to. But then the time is coming when you have the spirit without measure for those who are full of the word. Uh, they will move into that dimension, hundredfold dimension, where you have the spirit without measure. So, yeah, that's a good point. That's, that's a different word right there, fear, because it's attached to the enlargement. It's attached. You know, I was thinking the other day, <laughs> uh, uh, I said, if I bought another house, would it be a big house or a little house? You know, and uh, and then 
you know, it's like the Spirit kind of made me think about it. It's like, why, why think about a house? He says, I am your house, <laughs> you know. And in God, there is no no square footage. You know? that's, the, that's on earth. There, there's no square footage in God. God is your house. There is no square footage. So it was a it was a little opportunity for the Spirit to say, "Don't think in limited terms, square footage, and all that." He says, uh, I, I, I'm, "I'm bigger than any acreage. I'm bigger than any square foot. You know, square footage. So uh, if you live in me, it's endless. I am endless. So make me your abiding place. Make me your house." I don't know, yeah, thank you, Lord. Yeah, take that. I, I, I appreciate his counsel to, uh, to to arrest my mind from uh, from 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 you know kind of floating around in the typical limited language that we are accustomed to. When you're walking in God and you're listening to Him, He's constantly going to challenge you to take off uh, any limitations because you're dealing with God and. Nothing shall be impossible to him. He's, he's endless. He's immeasurable. And you, we're going to have to start thinking like, that's why I said the devil is terrified to find, for you to find out who you are. Terrified of you. Because once you start thinking about who you are and what God can use you to do, then you can start asking for that and start expecting it. Like I'm thinking about why, why can't we have a bank account with enough money in to rebuild the city of Jackson? I'm talking about the whole city. You know how much money that would take? It will take millions, millions, hundreds of millions of dollars to do that and make it, and make it glorious and make it to where you got orphans off the street, you got homeless off the street, you got Ministry on you, know, you got, and, and it's done first class. You know, we ain't got to wait for no federal funding <laughs> when we get funding from heaven, right? But who will believe that 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 can happen? Who can believe that we have an account as for is it, especially uh, provided by by God from heaven, and it's designed to rebuild our city and our environment, our streets, and all of the facilities and all of the buildings and houses and land. We can rebuild this according to heaven, right? But if we don't think that way, we don't know who we are, then how can we ask for it? And how can we be thankful that God will give us that opportunity? See, I'm going to challenge y'all more and more. Take the limits off. Take the limits off. Get rid of fears. Get rid of doubts. Get rid of what ifs, Right? Quit looking at what's happening around you and thinking and listening to negative frequency and being contained by that and start to say things according to the word. See, when you start speaking according to the word and people hear the revelation or people don't hear it, you, you're letting, you're releasing heaven on this earth. You're releasing it. Right? So, just because things are going bad in the world, it's not the way people want it to be. Well, what are you saying? <laughs> what are you believing? Do you know who you are? Do you know what you can ask for? Huh? Can y'all get it? Huh? See, the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. You are rising. Overcomers are rising. Overcomers are rising. And it needs to be uh, people who know who they are uh, and know how to speak in opposition of the limited circumstances. You know how you, you got insight, spiritual insight, but do it out of spirit. Don't just make up something out of your, your nugget. It's out of the spirit. That, that God reveals to you his, his heart. Ask for God. God, give me revelation of what's in your heart. Give me the view that's in your heart. Man, you ask for that and then start thanking him forward. You're going to be surprised over time that God will begin to deposit those nuggets of truth and sight, insight in you so that you, when you open up your mouth and you start making decisions and moving, it's coming out of a place 
from revelation from God's heart to yours. And that's a powerful thing to be able to do. And you're going to, you, let me give you another <laughs> warning. You're going to appear mighty strange to people. You will be a strange bird to people. Because it's not easy to be able to hear God and be connected to him and see what he's showing you. And then to be able to communicate that from time to time and to make decisions based on that. It's going to seem strange to everybody else, but that's okay. You have to be willing to have that in your spine to be able to stand. So I know what my Father and my Lord has revealed to me, and then this is what I'm going to represent. So, so, so be it. Everybody think I'm strange? So be it. But we're going to get results. <laughs> we're going to get results, right? Because watch, watch what I say. Just pay attention to what I say. It's going to come to pass, just as I said it is. All right? Amen? All right. So, uh, a few minutes left here. Now, <clears throat> it's important to understand when ministry is in you, how, first of all, to have a life that is feeding and receiving, but then... You know, you can come to class, you can be taught, you can study and say, oh, I get it, I understand, I see it, God. So it's one thing to learn the truth. But it's an extra work. So it's work to learn. But it's an extra work and labor when you begin to say or communicate or teach others what you know. So you may receive this, oh, I understand it. But then turn around and try to communicate what you understand to somebody. Teaching is a skill that the Spirit can give you, but not many are ordained to be teachers. There's, there's the office of a teacher. You know, he gave the fivefold ministry, gave the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. There's the office of a teacher is one thing. Not many going to have that. Everybody thinks they're a teacher, though. Every minister, every pastor in the pulpit thinks he's a teacher. But as far as having that, that office of a teacher, you don't see a lot. They're there, but you don't see a lot. And they have a unique view of, of seeing the word, and they have a unique way of communicating to simplify. So then, Paul said, when, when you ought to have been teachers, you have to need one to teach you again. So he's not talking about office there, but he's talking about just the overall landscape of us believers. We should be gaining the ability to teach based on what we understand. But you have to labor in that. You have to ask God to help you to communicate that because it's, it's one thing to hear and then, ooh, I got to understand it. But it's another thing to understand it in a way to communicate it where somebody else receives it simply from you. That's, not, that's, a, that's a whole other challenge. And I ran into that many times. I ran into that. I was like, wow, what, how, do I, how do I say this? I see it, but how do I say it to where others can get it to make it simple? And that's the, that's the key, simplicity. Simplicity. I see people teach and they get all complex. I was like, oh, you, you, you ran into your, your intellect. No, when your spirit shows you something and you see it, but then you have to give effort also. How do I communicate this in a very simple form? where people can hear it, and it's like, oh, I see it, right? And that's, that's something you have to ask for, you have to pursue. It takes just as much labor to do that as much as it is to learn it, you know? It takes labor to learn the word, but it takes labor to communicate the word. So be mindful of that and ask the Lord for help. How do I communicate what I know? How do I share simply what others can hear it 
and they, they, they can easily bite into it. How can I do that? All right. and, and I look for just the simplicity of, of things, you know. I look for the simplicity of things. I was talking to somebody, and they were trying to get me to explain the effects of praise and worship, because I think I said praise and worship is like two wings of an eagle. You know, it lifts you. You know, it takes us off the ground. It takes us higher. And then uh, the spirit gave me, had asked the person if they ever gone to a high-rise building with an elevator or in a big city and say, what did you do? Did you ever go to that elevator and hit the top floor and let the elevator take you to the top? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, that's what it's like to praise and worship. It's designed to get you off the earth and into the presence of God. And that was not anything deep, <laughs> you know, but it was a simple illustration to give that person uh, to take something out of scripture and put it in a modern, simple, little concept that anybody can understand, a child can understand. Hit the elevator, come in the elevator, hit the button, and the elevator takes you up. And say, now when you give God praise, when you come in giving God thanks, when you come in lifting your hands without wrath or doubting, you are entering into the spirit elevator and you're going, you keep doing it, you're going up higher and higher and higher into his presence. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. It's a simple, finding a simple way of communicating. Simple way of communicating. I was with my teacher before he passed away. And uh, his uh, car had a, uh, his tire had a little deflate, deflation to it. Uh, but he had a, uh, what do you call it, a compressor in his garage. He had a little Brother Jose, a little compressor over there. And, uh, you know, but this man is like, at this point, 93, 94 years old. And he, he could go, he said, I, I'm, I don't worry about it. I, could, I said, no, nah, no, nah, you might have to emergency, you might have to go. Drive that, you don't need driving that thing on no half flat tire, you know. So I said, Where's your compressor? So he pointed out to him, I went and got the compressor, plugged it in, and put it on there, and uh, you know, just just fill the air up, and then we were checking the air pressure, making sure. I said, What's your air pressure? Where you need it to be? And I checked his air pressure, and uh, so you know, he thanked me. And then we were talking about something, we were talking about the spirit. Before that happened, and I, because I was about to ask him a question about the spirit, and then for some reason I noticed the tire wasn't looking for it. But then it was like I didn't have to ask him because the Lord used that little event to show me. He said, "This is what my spirit is like. I will put air." and build the pressure up in you so that you can be able to roll. You can get it, you can move down the road through life because I put my spirit in you, just like you put that air in that tire. And I said, and it was more to it than that, but I said, thank you, Lord, for just that simple picture. Help, to, and I can say, I, I, don't, I don't know the full context that I came up, but if I ever have to explain the spirit to someone, I will refer to that. And say, you need spirit in you like that tire needs air to be able to hold that car, the weight of that car, and roll down the road. You need the spirit in you. Amen? Amen. It's simplicity. Pictures. You can, there's thousands of pictures in the natural life, natural living, that you can use to communicate the concepts of heaven, the concepts of the spirit. Don't make it difficult. Don't make anything complex. Look for the simplicity and communicate the simplicity of the word. That's what people are going to need. So when they come knocking on your door, when they come tapping you on the shoulder, when they run you down at work, when they see you at Walmart and you glowing with the, with the light of God, they want to know, can you please tell me about Jesus? Be simple. Be simple with it. All right? Amen? So it's the word. Stay with the word, but communicate it simply. Know the word, but communicate it simply. All right. And and uh, see, this is how you decide. Because see, 
Right now, the church is being disciples, supposed to be, but God's not, he's going to bring it to his, to his full, uh, his full service. You know, fivefold ministry is supposed to be a discipleship for the saints, to perfect the saints. Let me ask y'all, is, do, you, do you see any perfected saints around? Have you seen anybody perfected yet? No. Why is that? We've been 2,000 years since Jesus came. How come we don't have any perfected saints in 2,000 years? Because of the teachings that we get. Uh-huh. One reason, another reason could be uh, maybe some of us have gotten the teaching, but we've been lazy and we didn't want to do our part to labor. All of that. Anybody else? How come we're not perfected after 2,000 years? So that's a point too. That's that's good too. Well. And we've been seeking to be entertained mm-hmm. and not growing. Yeah. Seeking to be entertained and the ministers accomplishing that seeking. <laughs> you can't be entertained unless they create an entertainment environment for you. But that's true. That's it, it, a lot of that. All of that which I said is good. It's, it's true. And. Uh, you know, the church did not go with the paradigm, the, the format that God has set. The fivefold ministry is supposed to be the heaven, it was it's heaven's paradigm for perfecting the saints. And so that's what when you look at what the ministers do, what what <laughs> I think I said uh, Thursday. What is the disparity? The disparity, if you look at the man Jesus and what truth was in him, and you look at the church of Jesus and what truth is in them, there's a huge disparity between the two. The church does not communicate, nor does it have very much of what was in Jesus. Right? So, To disciple someone, the whole point of discipling is to communicate the seed of God's word for the purpose of God to be fulfilled in you, which is for you to become exactly like him, right? For you to become exactly like him through his word. You can, you and I cannot become what God is without his word in us. We can't do it. It's not our behavior. It's not how many sins we stop that makes us like him. It's how much we feed on the word. So then as a ministry, what do I need to do? I need to make sure I'm giving what? The word. As a ministry. As a minister, if you're ministers, you need to have the word in you before you can give the word to others. All right? You can't go, you, how can you minister and you don't have anything to minister? You're not going to bring people to what God has, has uh, purposed. If he says, I want these people to be brought to my image and my likeness, but you have to be discipled in the word first to be able to disciple others right? for that purpose. To be fulfilled. Okay. So you keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. That's why I said it has to be, say it a hundred times, thousand times, eating his flesh, drinking his blood. You know, Jesus over and over again admonished people, receive my words, continue in my word, abide in me and let my words abide in you. He constantly admonished us on that. Okay. Because that is going to take you and make you ready. To be like God, and then you'll have what you need to help others become like God. But you can't do it without truth. You can't do it without the Word. 
okay? And so that's going to be vitally important. You know, you don't you don't want to just listen to anything and everything. You don't want to just let anybody teach you anything. You want to make sure you're learning the truth, right? Amen. You want to make sure you're learning the truth. As a minister, I need to make sure I'm learning the truth. I had to make sure I learned the truth. And when God starts showing me the truth, I stuck with that. Right? I stuck with that. And when you want it, He'll lead you to it. <laughs> you know, but you even gotta want it. I want to know what's true. I know there's more than what we're hearing in the landscape of the church, God, but I want to know, this is what I said to the Lord, I want to know it the way you know it. I don't want to know it the way man knows it. I want to know the word the way you know it. How do you see this? You're the one that wrote it. It's your words. What did you mean when you said this is your word? How do you see it, Lord? That's what I asked him for. Sent me to a teacher who had that same passion, who God told him, came into his room and told him, I will give you the words. You don't, I don't want you following the man. He, the man wanted to go back in the 50s or 60s or something. He, wanted, he, he had made up his mind as a young man. He was going to Bible school. And God arrested him and says, no, I didn't call you to follow me. I called you to follow me. He said, I'll teach you what I want you to know. And when you get off course, I'll correct you. He said, the Lord came into his room and told him that. And he said, the Lord has been faithful, giving him revelation after revelation through the years. And I was so privileged that the Lord led me to this man and to sit at his feet. All right. I was mad at him because before he died, he told me, Grabbed me by the arm. He said, I ain't never told you. He said, but I've been to heaven. <laughs> I was like, uh, excuse me. I love our conversations. <laughs> you never told me you visited heaven. You know, or the Lord took him to heaven. Showed him some things. But when you have, when, when you have a heart for the truth, that is what you need for being disciples for discipling others. Bottom line, don't mix it up. Don't make it difficult. People have to be pointed to the simplicity of the truth to fulfill the expectation of God to conform us to his image. Stick with that. Don't, de don't deviate from that. Don't do anything different than that. Make sure you got it so that you can give it to others. It's very simple as way I can say it. Any questions on that? No. Yeah, y'all good? Yes, okay. All right. Um, I like it when y'all have no questions sometimes because it's, I made it simple enough. I, I believe I did. <laughs> so, I have one quick question. Yes, ma'am. Or uh, study Bibles that we use. You know, it's a lot of Bibles and study stuff that we uh -huh. there. Um, and I, sometimes it goes against your doctrine or what you believe. I mean, yeah. basic Bible. I'll, I would stick with, first of all, the King James. Mm -hmm. I would stick with that because it has the most cohesive and consistent uh, meaning. So in other words, if you start getting into other translations, you start losing meanings of words because they change the words. And you even lose some of the connections of the types and shadows in the Old Testament that are shadows of Jesus. But when they change the words, they took the meaning out of the types and shadows and you lose that definition. So I would stick to the King James because it, it is consistent with the types and shadows. So what this meant in the Old Testament, it means in the New Testament is the, the word, you, you, can, you can keep it consistent and not lose the meaning, and that helps you to build understanding. Uh, as far as a study Bible, I have used, uh, it's one called the Word, um, I don't even know if they make that anymore. 
but it was called the work and I think I still got a copy of it but uh, it was pretty good but I didn't I didn't rely on it a lot because I went through a phase I'll just share this with you I went through a phase back maybe 15 years ago or more where I did a lot of study and had a strong strength quarters and I would look up the Greek look up the Hebrew and that would give you, I learned, that would give you a generic kind of meaning, but it's not spiritual revelation. That's the thing about these study Bibles and concordance. It doesn't give you spirit and truth. So the Lord said, for me, he said, the spirit of truth will give you what the meaning. He opened that up to you, the spirit of truth. That's, the, that's what the interpreter of the Bible. If you look at Greek and Hebrew, that's fine. It's very generic. But it's not, it's still a man's language. <laughs> Greek is still a man's language. Hebrew is still a man's language. Latin is still a man's language. Just like English is a man's language. So I'm still going to need the spirit to connect the truth, to connect me to the truth that's in there. So I kind of got away from it. Every now and then I'll go back and look at just the, the original language or whatever. Uh, in the Greek or the Hebrew, but I don't depend on that. I don't depend on that. You know, I just let me see what they say. Let me see what they were on course. A lot of times I'm comparing things. You know, so uh, so yeah, that's a good question. But I would just basically stick with the King James, and if you have to use uh, strong concordance, that's very basic, very generic, and but the rest of it is uh, following. Uh, what's being taught in, in class, and and I'll probably go over more things as far as types and stuff. I've done that before, just to give you saying, okay, how do I follow this from the Old Testament to the New Testament? Because it's all about Jesus, right? And that's the thing: can I see Jesus in everything I read? Right. right. That's the thing. And sometimes you can read the New Testament and not get a full understanding. And sometimes you can find something in the Old Testament and it'll define this thing in the New Testament. You know. Uh, it'll kind of give you a kind of fill in the blanks, mm -hmm. in other words. And, and and remember this, scripture always interprets scripture. Yeah. So that that is, if you stay on that, I need to find, if I don't understand something about this word, that something somewhere in that word will help you to understand this word over here. <laughs> you know, scripture will always interpret scripture for you. You don't have to add anything. And I'm very suspect to go and add man's input. You know, some of them will have good understanding. And if I find that, I'll, I'll listen. But usually when I try to hear, that they'll, they'll be okay for a minute and then they'll kind of drop off and like, oh wow, you just you just went off the left or you just went off, off the road here. You know? So uh, stick with the King James. Stick with Letting him teach you how to use the scripture to define scripture. That's the best thing. And it's work. Jesus says, search the scriptures. Right? If you search it, you'll find more definition. And you'll find the scripture explains scripture. But if you're not in the habit of searching the scripture, then people like to find the easy out by saying, well, let, let me see what they said. Let me read this commentary. Let me see what this man said. And they try to find an easy way to to get something. We got to search the scripture, you know, so, uh, but that's the best thing I can keep it as pure as possible. So, amen. All right. Anything else? I think what helped me too, um, a while back, I think I had told you about too, you had said one time um, about like creating a chart of different scriptures and then having like list down different categories and then having off to the side, like whenever the um, Holy Spirit kind of explain to me certain scriptures have it like written out mm -hmm. and so that helped me a lot so whenever there were times we talk about the blood I had a specific section that talked about the you know the body of Christ and then it goes to the blood of Jesus then it goes to certain mm -hmm. like different categories of charts mm -hmm. and like whenever you know and the majority of it is just from when you're preaching I, I, like, you so you're you creating know, good and I created a whole study guide the whole spirit had me going there like all the time going back and looking and adding more to it okay. and it helped Okay. Good, good. No, that's good. That's good. I mean, because it makes it, uh, you know, sort of keeps you in a subject mind. So, which is a way that I will will approach it. You know, some people might try to read the Bible, whole Bible, from front to back. 
I've never ever done that. <laughs> Surprise. Uh, but what I will do is a subject like inheritance. You know? And I will study that, study that, study that for days, for weeks, for months. Uh, if it's the flesh of Jesus, like I said, or the blood of Jesus, or the overcomer, I will study it out. It's, I will have those subjects. And then you start to see over time how they connect one to another. The, the, the more and more the dots start to connect. So, uh, you know, that's why you, you start to see, well, it's the, what's the difference in him saying Father, Son, Holy Ghost over here, and then saying Spirit, Soul, and Body over here, and then you start to see a hundredfold, thirtyfold, sixtyfold, hundredfold here, you start seeing these three dimensions that God develops us in. And that's how the knowledge is, is in three dimensions. He starts you off in one, brings you to the next, and you keep pursuing, you go to the next. It's always going to be three dimensions. Development, three dimensional development is spiritual. He develops us in three dimensions. That's why you see it throughout scripture. Uh, you know, he makes these three dimensional statements. You see hundreds of them, hundreds of them. And, uh, you know, so you start seeing how they all fit together. <laughs> you know, uh, I think I taught on Bible study, those that are called, chosen, and faithful. Three dimensions. You know, gold, silver, precious stones. Three dimensions. Those are simplistic. Three dimensions. You develop us in three dimensions. Now I can learn and I can know what fits in what. You know, and that starts to really build your understanding more and more. You know, so... Uh, I mean, I can just go down the line on things that Jesus has said, and I know where to put it. Oh, this is this is in the first dimension. This is in the second. This is in the third. You know, and this it just keeps on. It just becomes vascular. You know, so. Uh, but that's good. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Good subjects, good categories create filling the blanks over time. God will help you fill in the blanks. Yeah. All right. Everybody good? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, amen. Well, let's let's pray. Unless y'all got something else to add or ask, uh, we're going to pray. Uh, Brother Jose, if you don't mind praying. Father, we just thank you for this day. You're so wonderful, so kind. And to know, Father,